Bokatov. Welcome to uh, Temple Sinai Streams. I'm Rabbi Shainer. It's wonderful to start our day together this morning, as it is every morning, and I'm really looking forward to taking this time together to connect, reflect, and remember as a community. Uh, this morning we're going to start, as we always do, with gratitude for the simple things in our lives, for the simple fact that we are here. And so we will say a blessing first for our body and our spirit, uh, which I'll invite you to join me in in just a moment. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher yatsar et ha'adam bechokma Uvaravo nekavim nekavim Chalulim chalulim Galu yviadu lifnei chisech vodecha שאם מבטח אחד מהם, או יסתם אחד מהם, אי אפשר להתקיים ולעמוד לפניך. ברוך אתה אדוני, רופא חול בשר, ומפליא לעשות. Blessed eternal God, creator of the universe, you have fashioned our bodies with wisdom, creating within us a finely balanced network. To stand before you in prayer is itself a fragile miracle. Eternal God, we praise you as the healer of body and spirit. We continue with uh, a, a blessing acknowledging what a miracle it is that we have the opportunity to stretch our intellect, to open our hearts through words of Torah, the words of our tradition, which we will uh, say together here. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshanu mitzvotav Vetzivanu la'asok B'divrei Torah Ve'arevna Adonai Eloheinu Et divrei Toratcha B'finu U'v'fi amcha Beit Yisrael V'niyya anachnu V'tzetzainu V'tzetzai amcha Beit Yisrael Kulanu yodei shmecha לומדי תורתך על ישמה, ברוך אתה אדוני, המלמד תורה לעמו ישראל. Blessed eternal God, creator of the universe, you sanctify our lives with mitzvot, and command us to engage in the study of Torah. Eternal our God, may your words of Torah be sweet to us. Let every generation, young and old, the whole family of Israel, come to know you through the study of your Torah for its own sake. Eternal God, we praise you as the teacher of Torah to the people Israel. And the Torah reminds us that we are part of a larger connected whole, but that everything connects down to a single point, that the creator of the universe, that the God of the universe is one. And so we say together these words from the Torah, the words of Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Le'olam Vaed Ve'ahavta את אדוני אלוהיך בכל לבבך ובכל נפשך ובכל מאודיך. והיו הדברים האלה אשר אנוכי מצבך היום על לבביך, ושיננתם לבניך ודיברת בם, ושיבתך בביתך ובלכתך בדרך ובשוך בך ובקומך. וקשרתם לאות על ידיך, והיו לתותפות בין עיניך. וכתבתם על מזוזות ביתך ובשעריך. ויאמר אדוני אל משה לאמור, דבר אל בני ישראל, ואמרת עליהם, ועשו להם ציצית על כנפי בגדיהם לדורותם. ונתנו על ציצית הכנף פתיל תחילת. והיה לכם לציצית, וראיתם אותו, וזכרתם את כל מצוות אדוני, ועשיתם אותם. ולא תטו אחרי לבבכם, ואחרי עיניכם, אשר אתם זונים אחריהם. למען תזכרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי, והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם. 
אני אדוני אלוהיכם, אשר הוצאתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות לכם לאלוהים, אני אדוני אלוהיכם. אדוני אלוהיכם אמת. Well, having said our morning blessings and, and joined together in this chance to connect, we now have an opportunity to reflect on words from our senior rabbi, Rabbi Dolgan. So here we are together on Friday morning on the 18th day of the month of Tammuz, on the 10th day of the month of July, uh, the day after Shiva Salva Tammuz, uh, the 17th day of Tammuz, a day of fasting and reflection historically for our people, recognizing a number of uh, truly painful historical events that took place in the life of our people on this day. They need to be commemorated, but the way in which they should be commemorated or acknowledged, I think, has special meaning for us at this particular time that we are going through. So what is the seventh day of Tammuz really recognizing anyhow? Well, the original list of what that day includes comes here from chapter four of Mishnah Ta'anit of the first book of the oral tradition. And it says here, as you can see, there were five events that happened to our ancestors on the 17th of Tammuz and five on Tisha B'Av, on the 9th of Av. On the 17th of Tammuz, the tablets were shattered the tamid, or daily sacrifice, was canceled. The walls of the city of Yerushalayim were breached. And Apostamus burned the Torah and placed an idol in the temple, the Beit HaMikdash, in Yerushalayim. So these five events um, all take, took place traditionally on this day three weeks before Tisha B'Av, creating this time, as I mentioned last week, of semi-mourning. But what does that mean, mourning? How do we acknowledge these events to begin with? I want to talk next week about some of the meaning, I think, of some of these particular events. But it's the process of recognition that I think is so important. Um, there is a, a traditional service before a holiday, it's called Slichot, um, which means prayers of uh, penitence or apology, uh, if you will. Um, and each prayer is called a slicha, which is the modern word for excuse me or I'm sorry. Um, but uh, in fact, um, it's not um, just for that time. There are slichot, these kinds of prayers for specific days and especially for the 17th of Tammuz. And the kind of the uh, one of the slichot uh, that for this day that I think is especially significant um, has within it a refrain uh, where it keeps saying ki v'shiva sal b'tamuz and then what it says because on the seventeenth day of Tammuz and then it says. Um, well, initially it says something happened on the 70th day of Tammuz. After lines of poetry, it says the tablets were broken. And then it says the Torah was burned. Then it says an image was put up in the sanctuary. And then it says the walls were breached. And then it says the daily sacrifice and then mentions other sacrifices, all of which were stopped. And then after skipping one um, refrain, it switches gears and it says, V'shiva sal b'tamuz hafoch lanu l'sasonu l'simcha. Take the 17th day of Tammuz and change it to a day of celebrating and joy and Yeshua v'nechama and strength and consolation. So there is a journey that we need to be on to take a day or a time that has so many difficulties in it and to turn it into a time of consolation and strength or even joy and celebration. How do we do that? Uh, I think the key word is mourning and the key refrain in this particular uh, piyut, in this particular medieval poem, it I think also holds the key to what that means. The central one says, Ki um, tamuz It says, because this 17th day of Tammuz, um, we take responsibility for what we have done. 
Now, traditionally, the theology is one about uh, sin and repentance, but I think the lens, the lens that is key to mourning is a question that we ask ourselves when we're having different ex difficult experiences. It says, not who's to blame, but what is my responsibility? Not why did this happen, but what can I learn? I think those two questions are very much what at this time and what in many ways mourning, which is a transition from one time in our life or the life of our people to another. Um, it, uh, I think that transition of mourning comes about when we ask those two questions. Um, what is my responsibility here? And what can I learn? At times of personal mourning, uh, often it's difficult not to assess or feel blame. Um, and blame is a real thing. And when we feel that way, we have to work that through. But mourning, this transition to the next part of our life says, now that this has happened, what responsibility do I have to myself, to my loved one who's no longer here, to my family or community who are around me who've also lost this special individual? What is my responsibility? And uh, even more so, when we respond to such moments, we need to say, what can I learn? And I think the ability to do that is essential at this time in our lives, at this time in the life of our world where we continue to wrestle with this pandemic and the influence it has. It has a lot more than influence on the lives of so many. Um, it causes pain and loss and illness. Um, and we have to ask the two important questions. What is my responsibility? What can I learn? I don't think we're going to be able to successfully move forward as a community, as individuals, as a society, if we're not able to mourn the moments that we had before this pandemic, which doesn't mean that they're entirely gone. It means that we have to acknowledge that we're in transition to a time that if it's going to be healthy and safe, it's going to be different. And we need to say, in this, in creating a new world that's meaningful and safe, that's connected, but socially distant, what is my responsibility? When we look at the changes around us and people that matter so much to us in our patterns, we need to say, what can I learn? I really hope as we're into this three week period of mourning, which really means reflection and introspection and responding to these questions, that we're able to respond to these questions about the essential elements of our public life as well as our private life. These questions are there for us each and every day, even at the best of times and especially at these challenging times. And so I hope that these three weeks for our whole community um, and for all of us can be a time of responsibility and also in a very constructive way, even a positive way, a time for learning. So with those words from our rabbi, we take now this moment of responsibility to think about those who are in need of healing and wholeness and who are ill, isolated, or on the front lines working to keep the rest of us safe and healthy. We have a responsibility to have hope for them and to uh, remember them in these moments as we turn towards uh, of our tradition to pray for them. Misha Berach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak Ve'Yaakov ואימותינו שרה רבקה לאה ורחל, הוא ירפא את כל מכותינו. יהי רצון מלפניך אדוני אלוהינו, להכה למען ולרפאותם, וישלח לנו מהרה רפואה שלמה ועטרת שלום, ונאמר, אמן. May the one who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and our mothers, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, heal all who suffer. May it be God's will to provide healing and strength, to reveal to us the holiness of life, the wholeness of shalom, and to guard us from all illness. And let us say together, Amen. 
Well, we've come to the part of this morning where we have an opportunity to remember those who went before us and who showed us the way uh, that, that we should strive to live towards. Uh, this morning, we are thinking of those who died at this time in recent days, David Garber, Zena Werb, and Robert Filler, as well as those who died at this time in years past on this 18th of Tammuz, we remember Phyllis Goldman, Barbara Hamori, Sidney Hecht, Mark Joseph, Joanne Kendall, Anne Shankman, and Samuel Shields. With their memories in our hearts, we wish that, uh, that they will give us blessing wherever we go as we turn to words sanctified by memory, words glorified by hope the words of the Mourner's, Mourner's Kaddish. Yitgadal vid kadash shmeh rabba, be'alma divrach iru'te v'amlich machute, v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayei dechol b'et Yisrael, ba'agala v'izman kariv v'imru, amen. Yehe shmeh rabba mevarach le'alam u'le'alamei almaya, Yit barach, ve yish tabach, ve yit paar, ve yit romam, ve yit nase, ve yit hadar, ve yit ale, ve yit halal, shme de kudsha, brichu. Le ela min kol birchata, ve shirata, tush bechata, ve nechemata, da miran be alma, ve imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shmaya, ve chaim alenu ve al kol israel, ve imru, amen. Ose shalom bimromav, hu yarase shalom, alenu ve al kol Israel, vimru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn, and comfort to all who remember, as we say together, amen. Well, it's just been amazing to me to spend this morning with you uh, every day this week. I'm really glad that we had this time together, and I hope that uh, you will join us for Shabbat services this evening at 6.30 and tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., as well as our Torah study at 11.30 a.m. tomorrow. All of those links can be found on the front page of the Temple Sinai website, templesinai.net, as well as uh, I want to invite a special invitation to you and anyone you know who has small, uh, ch small children to join us at 11.30 this morning for uh, magical mitzvah celebration. We're going to sing some songs and tell some stories and get ready for Shabbat together. And uh, I want, we have to acknowledge um, with deep gratitude that a contribution to our Minion Fund has been made by David Kendall and the Kendall family observing the art site for Joanne Kendall this morning. And so with all of that, with gratitude in our hearts, uh, we say thank you and Boker Tov, go out and make it a great day.